Hi, welcome. I'm Phil Hunter from Citrus Grove Church, and uh, thank you for taking this time to continue with us in the Gospel of Luke. Uh, if you're not able to worship with us this weekend, that's why this video is here. Uh, we're in the Gospel of Luke chapter 12 this week, and we're in the, the middle toward the end. Verse 35 is where we're starting today. I hope you're able to join us at Pinecrest Academy in Wesley Chapel. It's up on Highway 54 in between Zephyr Hills and Wesley Chapel. 9.30 on Sundays is the place, uh, is the time to find us at that place. And it'd be great to, to worship with you together there. There are also online and in-person Bible studies you can be a part of. Um, the best way to find out about all of our ministries is to, to sign up for our weekly email. It comes out on Wednesdays and it packs everything you need to know in there about our, our four ministries of gather, grow, give, and go. So the way to do that is there's a little sign up form. Click that in the side of this video here and uh, put in your email address so you can get on the list to get that one email a week. Let's pray. Lord, bless our time together in your word. Uh, you, Father, Son, and Spirit are what we need and you have given us all we need. Help us be faithful with what you've placed into our hands. Amen. Verse 35 starts this way. Be dressed and ready for service and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell, tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and he will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. I'll pause there for a second. Uh, friend, just realize that Jesus is going to give in the next few verses some serious warnings, but he starts here with sweet, good news. These are promises and reminders in picturesque language of, of what Jesus is doing for you in the first place. Why he would be worth waiting and watching for in the first place? Why would it be worth acting as though every day could be your last or it could be this world's last? Why would you live your life in a state of high alert, like a guard on watch duty or like the designated driver at a party when no one else is sober? Why would you do that? Well, the reason is the master that you're waiting for is, is just so unlike anyone else you know. Yes, Jesus is your boss. He's the master in this little story he tells. But what other boss walks into the office, immediately changes into butler clothes, and takes out your trash and vacuums around your desk for you, and then brings you a cold drink, and then serves you a five-course meal, all so that you don't have to get up from where you are? This is the kind of leader that we follow. It is totally backwards that he would act like that toward us. Oh, he has plenty of power himself. If he wanted to rule by fear, he could. But he doesn't want to. He rules by stooping down and serving you, fetching you what you need, and absolutely oozing with love for you. That's why we follow Jesus. And why we pay attention when he's got good advice for us, when he's got encouragements or even warnings for us. He is with us right now, he promises, in a way that, that we can't see or measure. But he promises us that we will see him soon in the way that you see anybody else uh, with a soul and a body and you just talk to them and you stand in front of them. Jesus' encouragement is to be ready for that day. Wait for that day like it could be today when he, he serves you that banquet in heaven. Could be. Or when he calls you to his side and what he'll do for you is, is clean you up. Every last speck of the rebellious, stubborn, impure instincts that are still in you here, even in, in Christians, yes, he's going to free us at that point from the shame and the regret and the weakness that sin brings into your life. You'll be free of all that. That day will be good for you. But you don't know when that day is going to hit. So verse 39, Jesus says, But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready. 
because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. 24-7 is the standard. It's the name of the game in the home security industry. Obviously, it has to be 24-7. Who would buy an alarm system that only works during daylight hours? And you wouldn't even need an alarm system if you knew that the thief was coming at 2 a.m. tonight. Well, you'd have the whole sheriff's department sitting there waiting for him in force at 2 a.m. But you don't know whether this world will last till 2 a.m. or 5 a.m. or 10 years or 10,000 more years. So his best advice is be ready right now. Verse 41, Peter asked Jesus, Lord, are you telling all this parable to us or to everyone? The Lord answered, Who then is a faithful and wise manager whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food allowance at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. Truly, I tell you, he, the master, will put the manager in charge of all his possessions. That's what a good manager does. She takes good care of what's been entrusted to her. She knows it's not her stuff, but she feels the weight of the responsibility and acts the way that's expected of her. But if you've worked any job at all, and you, you then know that not every manager is all that great at managing, and some are downright awful at it. Jesus goes there, verse 45. Suppose the servant says to himself, My master is taking a long time in coming, and then he begins to beat the other servants, both men and women, and to eat and to drink and get drunk. The master uh, of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. The servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants will be beaten with many blows. That's like a, a willful sin. They know it's wrong and they just go ahead and do it anyways. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. That's an ignorant sin. I didn't really know it was wrong. Nobody told me it was wrong, but it was wrong. In either case, the person gets beaten with blows of punches. Um, this is a, a way of, of saying that every sin is serious. Some are maybe more serious and some are more willful. But any sin is a sin. Uh, he wraps up saying, From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. From the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. So, as you get to the end of that part, the question on everyone's mind is, who are the managers that Jesus is talking to? And what has he entrusted to these managers? Specifically, where are you in this story? Are, are, is he talking to you? Well, he's, Jesus has given us all lots of different things to take care of. All the stuff you own and the stuff you wear, what you earn, what you spend. He gives that in different amounts to different folks. But his command, be faithful with what I give you and be wise with it, it's the same to everyone all across the economic spectrum. But... Here, he's more specifically talking about one unique treasure that he has entrusted to you and to me and to many others. It's the greatest jewel of all. It's life forever. And peace with God right now and forever. You get that all through your Savior Jesus. So, yes, he himself is the treasure he has entrusted you with. He is the most beautiful, priceless gift. And he's all yours. Jesus' death on the cross, placing himself between his father's anger over sin and you, by him standing in between there, he has given you a treasure. Jesus using his power to, to raise up what is busted and dead, up to live and, and thrive, that is a treasure that Jesus entrusts to you. He has entrusted himself to you, placed himself and his spirit and his comfort and his message into your ears and in your head and in your heart, and you have to manage what you'll do with him now that he's in there. Will you be a lifelong student of Jesus? Will you say no to the temptations that he, he warns you to avoid? 
Will you see the other blessings that he has given you as not good enough or as too many responsibilities or would you see them as gifts from his hand? Will you call on Jesus? Will you uh, remember what he's done for you? At those times when you're starting to think, oh, I don't know if he cares, will you remember? He surely does. Will you entrust him to yet more souls? Will you talk about Jesus with those people that he has put right around you? Will you let your light shine as, as you shoulder under the tough job of caring for a family member or speaking up for what is true or standing out like a, a sore thumb when you don't go along with the crowd but you're sticking firmly to God's word? These are all ways that you manage what God has entrusted to you. They are all ways that you live up to the responsibility of being a manager in Jesus' kingdom. Yes, it's a weight. Yes, it's a burden. It's a burden you wouldn't have if you didn't know Jesus. But like each of the responsibilities that you have, you can count up any of them. It is a blessing from God that he put you in this spot. And it's a chance to be faithful with what he's given you. Some people are, are called in a more formal way. They are entrusted with reminding a congregation or passing on to a classroom of students the treasure of knowing Jesus. And that's probably what Peter was asking about. Do these verses only apply to ministers? And Jesus doesn't give him a, a straight answer. Instead, he hints that there is added spiritual responsibility for gospel ministers to faithfully proclaim the gospel that they know. But they aren't by far the only ones entrusted with this great treasure. Anyone who knows the love of Jesus is driven out of themselves, driven to think about the, that family over there and about this coworker and about the people across the street who don't even speak my language, but Christ's love compels me to see them as people that God has dropped on my doorstep, so to speak, at this time, in this place, in this current season, in my current situation, here I am, and here is the treasure that God has given me, and here is a way God can use me. Uh, my prayer for you and your prayer for yourself and all of our prayer just needs to constantly be, Lord, you have entrusted me with such a great treasure. And this treasure changes lives for eternity, including my own. So help me use it faithfully. And joyfully, because I, I really can't think of a more joyful responsibility than to, to, to have my life saved by Jesus. And to bear the responsibility of spending my life telling everyone else that Jesus saved their lives too. That is a good prayer to pray. We need that reminder of how our boss, our master, treats us. As you get bogged down, you can always think of more excuses why not to speak of, but remember who he is. Remember, you don't know what day you're going to meet him or what day they are going to meet him. Since you carry this treasure around in your pocket with you all day, every day anyways, you might as well take it out when you have a chance. You might as well be faithful with it and place it into the hands of someone else who needs this treasure too. When uh, pastor Steve Newis from our congregation was a pastor up in Canada. He was sitting in a waiting room around Christmas and he started chatting with the only other guy in there. Wouldn't you know, this guy was open to talking more about Jesus. I realized that was something he, he was missing in his life. And he went through their church's Bible basics course and then he promptly died. And because this guy happened to be a huge fan of the local hockey team, everyone from the team in their offices came to the funeral where Pastor Steve, again, faithfully passed on the treasure that Jesus entrusted to him, to us, and that Jesus had entrusted to that man from the urgent care waiting room. And as Pastor Steve spoke the gospel, God was entrusting that message to everyone else at that funeral, learning about life forever as a gift from Jesus. And, and on and on it gets passed. And on and on, the call to be faithful with what has been passed to you goes on. And on it goes here at Citrus Grove Church, too, as you invite your neighbor, your family members, to spend a few hours 
studying the Bible at Fresh Start Bible Basics. Or an hour this weekend, coming to church and sitting with you. It's, it's, it's the, see if it isn't what they're missing in life. See if it isn't worth hearing more about. They aren't going to be mad. Not nearly as mad as you think they're going to be if you bring that up. See, they realize that it's one of your responsibilities. It's a job entrusted to you. You have to talk to them about the most important things in your life and in theirs. You simply can't help speaking about what you have seen and heard. What a privilege. And what a great responsibility. But what a joy. Jesus, keep us faithful to the task you've given us and always ready for your return. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, as you make us faithful witnesses and managers in your kingdom, fill us with joy. Forgive us for the times we have not spoken up. Uh, Give us more opportunities and allow us to uh, bring your kingdom in places where right now it is not shining brightly. Allow that uh, message to ring out through your people of our, our congregation and through many others across the globe. Here are prayers for those who are in in need of your your comfort and your assistance, your presence by their side as they go through tough times, surgeries, uh, uh, disabilities, and many, many responsibilities that you have given us. As we feel their weight, remind us that our performance uh, up to those responsibilities is not what you look for when deciding whether to let us into your kingdom. Instead, that's a gift you've already given us. And now make us... Make us faithful. Give us strength and wisdom to do the tasks your wisdom has assigned us. We pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.